Hello, my beautiful friends. Welcome back to Light Fragments Oracle, where we talk about all different kinds of things, including putting on makeup, including card readings, including spiritual things, including self-improvement, all of it, all of it. And I'm so glad that you are here with me today. I'm going to do something a little bit different today. I'm going to chat with you while I put on makeup about a subject that has interested me for two decades. And starting off, it wasn't so easy. But I've really learned over the last 20 years how to finagle around this subject through meditation. And I think I can help some of you. I think I can help some of you determine what it is that's going on inside of you that is causing you deep sadness, deep pain, deep unhappiness. And I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a psychiatrist, I'm not even a therapist. But in the course of the work that I've done, also in the course of teaching students for 11 years, I've gotten really in touch with the metaphysics behind our human bodies and energy and how it works. Now, we're always learning. I'm always learning. I don't pretend to know everything. And thank God that I don't. Who wants to talk to somebody that thinks they know everything? I certainly don't. But I can share some insights and I can help you. And we can have fun while we do it. So today I'm going to review the review that I did on the Delilah Alibi Perfect Cover Fluid Foundation. Reason being, I went downstairs after I applied all the makeup the other day and I looked in my 10 time magnifying mirror that I have suction cup to the window in my downstairs bathroom because that is the best light for makeup. And I thought, oh boy, it looked good on camera, but it really didn't look good out in daylight. And I know what I did. First of all, I put on too much. You don't need two coats. You only need to cover those areas twice that might need it. But you don't need two coats. Secondly, I used the Botanical Republic Restore Youth Serum, but I let it sink in too much. And I didn't have on any moisturizer over my serum. So it, it didn't cover the w evenly. Maybe I'm being too picky, but, but if I'm going to walk outside, I want to make sure that that's the way it looks. Even, fresh. And I think today I will be using a moist beauty blender. I think that this is going to work much better than a brush. Delilah says that we should use our fingers too. The new product that I'm going to be trying today, I'm a rebel. I'm a total rebel. <laughs> I'm a nonconformist through and through. You know how everybody has been picking up the new Natasha Denona, I Need a Nude palette. And when I first saw it, I said to myself, oh my gosh, um, 
I think I have so many, you know, eyeshadows that look exactly like that, that I don't need it. So the I need a Natasha Denona nude eyeshadow palette, I don't need it. But I said to myself, I don't have any Natasha Denona. And I, I love everything about her palettes, the way they look all the reviews that I've watched. So I, Beautylish, was having a special. And so I ordered Mini Nudes Eyeshadow Palette. And this, ha this is an eyeshadow brush gift set. So this little mini also comes with a brush and I paid $25 for this which included shipping so it was a really good deal for Natasha Denona one thing that I would like to say just upon first opening this little mini you know how when you get the elf minis they're light as a feather this has substance to it this has a substance to it. And I ordered it because of the fall colors inside here. So you, there are two mattes and three shimmers. And this is the brush, which is absolutely divine. It's a really, really nice, high quality travel eyeshadow brush so I feel like I really got my money's worth from that order the colors in this palette are bronzage this color here is called coin Q U O I N this color here is called lumino this color here is called Sienna. And this color here is called Soil. You know what I love about this is it reminds me of Out West. Anyway, getting back to the video today. While I'm putting on my serums, my, my moisturizer, we're going to have a little bit of a chat. And we're going to chat about what do you do when you're in a relationship, and it could be any relationship, but I'm going to stick primarily on a love type relationship, uh, a couple, a partner. What do you do when that partner hurts you? Um, and I'm, I'm not talking about, let's get this out on the table. I'm not talking about any severe abuse here. That's not going to come up in my conversation. We all know that severe abuse should not be tolerated. And when we meet somebody, we have an expectation that that's just not going to happen to us. We're not going to be in that kind of a situation. And if we think it might be, like there might be some red flags, we think we're going to be able to change that person whether it's male or female. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And I think that this will help some people. And if you have chosen to not be with that person anymore, you guys have split, you're on to another relationship or not, there's some healing that needs to take place. And there's some forgiveness that needs to take place. And if anything, 
do it for you. So let's get into the makeup video. Okay, I'm going to put on some serum. We're going to just do three drops. You know, I see people pat their serum on. Um, I don't even know if there's really any way to do it. <laughs> I mean, if you want to get up three hours before you've got to go to work just so you can do your face, have at it. When you enter a relationship of any kind, you take with you the person that you are. And I know I've mentioned this in other videos. And depending on your upbringing, um, where you lived, um, rich or poor, a hard, you know, working family, a family that didn't care about you, um, maybe you were abandoned, whatever it is, you take that person with you. Even though you might have excelled and succeeded wherever you are in life. And oftentimes we like to cover up the fact that we have some kind of a past. We don't really want anybody to know. We don't really want anybody to know that our one of our parents was an alcoholic or a drug addict. We don't want anybody to know that there was incest. We don't want anybody to know that there was physical abuse or that we watched physical abuse. And I think that it's important or it's more important to get right inside of ourselves first. Because as we begin to get right inside of ourselves, we begin to see and we become aware of just exactly how deep those wounds go. Are some of the wounds not as bad as we thought they were? Are some of the wounds worse than we thought they were? And so we end up with these pain bodies. We end up with, if you were to just try to picture it like this, inside of your body are all these little people. And one of those little people's names is anger. The other little person's name is sadness. The other little person's name is unhappiness. The other little person's name is jealousy. The other little person's name is, is lack. The other one's poverty. The other one is addiction. And all of these pain bodies live inside of you. And every now and then, a little pain body decides to come out. And it comes out when we're faced with something we don't want to face. Perhaps somebody said something to us and it made us angry. Well, pain body comes out. Perhaps someone that we love did something to us and it makes us really sad. Unhappiness guy comes out and so on. And until we learn how to heal those pain bodies, one by one, doesn't mean they're not going to come out but they will come out less and less. They will continue to come out 
all the time until they are healed. And I think one of the first pain bodies that we are visibly able to witness is anger. Because anger usually involves a lot of drama. And if you're around somebody that is constantly getting angry, they have a pain body that needs to be healed. They probably have a dozen that need to be healed. And as time goes on, depending on how low that person gets, they may or may not choose to get help. And a lot of times it's through therapy, but not always. It could be a significant traumatic experience in that person's life that catapults them to want to change. Because it's like a it's like a tumbleweed effect. Anger causes more anger, causes more drama, causes hurt feelings, causes sadness, causes, and on and on and on and on. It's a downward spiral. And the same goes for perpetual sadness. The same goes for depression. The same goes for lack of communication. There are so many things that attach themselves to these pain bodies. If somebody doesn't have the necessary communication skills, you might see them clam up. And you might see them not talk because they've never been taught how to properly talk. Or they might go to the extreme and blurt out exactly how they're feeling with no filter. And wouldn't it be nice if every single one of us on this planet was 100% perfect with no pain bodies? And I know you've heard me say this before. But that's just not the case. Because we came from someone who came from someone who came from someone who came from someone. And there's a chain. So we all have a choice. Do we perpetuate the chain? Or do we break the chain? I'm going to go with just one full pump of the Delilah. Well, I did a little bit more. I'm just going to kind of pat it on. You know, <laughs> one pump would have been enough, ladies and gents. I mean, I see it, I see it all the time on social media. It grates on me to no end. And, you know, not everybody wants to share their closets. They probably <laughs> had company and threw all these boxes in their closets to hide them. So nobody would see how messy the house was. Nobody wants anybody to see their closets. And so in that sense, social media has really become almost a place of being able to hide. And, you know, I'm going way back to the inception of Facebook. Boy, was I naive. Okay, I'm just going to pat this in now with my beauty blender. Just going to pick up a little bit of this. 
and I'm going to gently stipple it on the areas that I want more coverage. Because the other day what I did was I really packed it on. I think I need a little bit more right there. If you do not have an angled foundation brush like this, I have another one. This one is smaller. See the difference in size? This is my preferred size, but I like the bristles on this one. Um, Get yourself an angled foundation brush. They're really nice. You can work in the corners of your nose with them. I just love different brushes for different needs. And I feel that this brush is good for this foundation. Delilah has their own brush. So when you, if you were to choose to order this foundation, you can get your own brush. I'm putting some over my eyelids and a little under my eyes and over. See how I could kind of turn it into the corner of my eyes? And I'm just going to kind of gently brush this all over my face, down my neck to even it out. Let me sit back and you tell me what you think. It's a good color for me. Right now, this time of year. I love the name Delilah. <laughs> My daughter had a cat named Delilah. Let me do a swatch of this particular palette for you. Well, ladies, everything that everybody has said about this Natasha Denona quality is true. Absolutely true. <laughs> I'm telling you, those eyeshadows when I put my finger in, they're like butter. This color right here as a transition color while I talk to you. So let me just see, what were some of the pain bodies that I had in my first relationship right up to this relationship? Well, feeling abandoned was one of them. Um, I had this feeling of being abandoned. And I don't quite know where that came from other than maybe past relationships that didn't work out or, you know, friends. I, I honestly don't know where it came from, but I did have that feeling. And so I, one of the ways that I would combat that is to, to try to gain control of my circumstances. But I'll tell you when the, the real work began. The real work began when none of that was working for me anymore. And all of the pain bodies that were rearing their ugly head inside of me had to be looked at. 
So if somebody does something to you that brings out anger or perhaps to somebody that you love, anger is an emotion, <clears throat> but rather than name it, feel it instead without reacting to it. Feel that. You know, when we burst into tears and we start sobbing over something that's very painful, we're feeling it. We're, we're crying because we feel it. It becomes extreme when we can't stop it. And there are times when the waterworks will come on and we can't shut them off. And there are times when we've had to shut them off and didn't want to, and that turns into anger. And that stuffing from whatever the conditioning is that you have received throughout your life created those pain bodies. Somebody walking away from you mid-sentence that hurts, especially when you're looking for a resolution on something. But instead of attaching yourself to the label of anger, the label of sadness, the label of depression, try to look at where this is hurting you. Because pain bodies will manifest in the body too. Back aches, headaches, body aches, dis-ease, disease. It's unhealthy to not be vocal about how you feel. Speaking your truth with honesty and clarity. Okay, let's move on to, I'm going to use this dark color right here. <laughs> Everything is true. These colors are so pigmented. I'm going to have to splurge and buy one of Natasha's palettes. Oh my gosh. Honestly, I don't think that I've ever used an eyeshadow that blends as well as this. And if any of you are holding something inside of yourself that is so horrible, that needs to come out, there are really great therapists that are also holistic healers out there. Find one. Okay, I'm going to take this color right here. And I'm going to put it in the center of my eye and move it to the corner. And I'm not even going to use a brush. I'm just going to tap it. Wow. Really, really love. I really love this little palette. The colors are striking. Beautiful. What makes you feel the things you feel? behave the way you behave and begin to heal those aspects of yourself instead of trying to change somebody else first. Um, I have a little story to tell you. About three or four years ago, I think it was three years ago, I had a situation that happened to me that bothered me so badly that I was unable to sleep. And I made a conscious choice. Now remember, it's taken me years and years. I had a breakthrough. 
I made a conscious choice to feel my emotions. It started off first with anger. I was very angry. And then as I sat with it for a couple of hours, literally in the dark, at night, in my house, sitting. And as I sat with this, the anger turned into a deep, deep core being sadness. And I wanted to cry, but I didn't. I didn't. Because as I stared at this emotion, I realized something about myself. I realized that if I gave in to the crying, I was giving in to the pain. And the pain did not have any control over me. It only had control over me if I allowed it to. So I thought to myself, how in the world am I going to eliminate this? This feeling that I just couldn't shake. Well, my house is shaped like a circle, actually. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a house, rectangle, but it's, the downstairs is a circle. You can go from the living area down the hallway into the kitchen, dining, and all the way around to the entryway back into the living room. It makes a circle. And I didn't want to wake anybody up, and I didn't want to put any lights on because the darkness was exactly how I felt. And so I decided I was going to walk this off in my house. And I walked. And as I walked, I whispered. I whispered how I was feeling. And I would go around and around. And each time I made a loop, I, I thought about one more aspect of how I was feeling and then I would let it go and I kept doing this and I kept doing this till finally it was four o'clock in the morning. I sat down in my chair and I had a breakthrough. It's something I've never experienced in my whole entire life. The anger that I had towards the situation and towards the individual was not there anymore. It was gone. And I felt this deep sense of inner peace. Well, I went to bed and I woke up at seven o'clock in the morning with three hours of sleep and I felt like I had slept for 12 hours. I released a pain body that I had been carrying probably since I was a child. And that experience has helped me to be more present with the people in my lives, my life, not perfect, believe me, but it has helped me to gain more awareness to be present with the people in my life without taking that on. And, and this is the deep healing that we all need as a collective, as a planet. If we are going to rise up 
as a collective, as a planet. And all of the dark, deep, negative energies, they won't be able to reside. They won't. So, I hope that my little story helped you today. And I will be back with the rest of my makeup on. Okay, my friends, this is the finished look. I'm thrilled with the Natasha Denona Mini. I'm thrilled with the Delilah Alibi Foundation. It's a really great foundation. Really love it. I welcome... <clears throat> I welcome life as it presents itself to me. Today, I take each step on my path to fulfillment with good faith. I swim easily with the flow of life. I embrace all experiences the universe bestows on me, even those that may prove to be challenging. What did I say? If you're going to grow and rise up, it's everything. I know all will fall into place for my greater good and my highest self. I added that. Okay, my friends, be well, be blessed, be beautiful because you are, because there is nobody else on the planet like you. I'm going to say it again and again. You are enough. And what you need to work on, you already know what that is. So begin today. Until next time. Mwah!